Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and information to turn your real estate business into a lifestyle of freedom. Uh, I think I messed up our own tagline, but I'm not sure. Greg is, give, Greg is giving me a look, so I may have said information instead of inspiration. I think that's the problem. Yes. So yeah, I'm we like, are. Uh... Yes, we're all about turning your real estate business into a lifestyle of freedom. In order to do that, obviously, there must be deals in the pipeline, and we're going to talk about how to get better at closing those deals by better understanding both your own personality as well as the personality profiles of the people that you are selling to and attempting to help and serve and, uh, and getting more of those deals in the pipeline actually closed. So with that being said, I've got the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat where he so, so belongs back in the box. Uh, we are no longer in person. We're back from Vegas at the uh, EQ shareholders meeting, and uh, Greg is back uh, a thousand miles away where he so belongs. Greg, what's up today? Well, you suck. I enjoy hanging out with you. Uh, but, now, the rumors are true. You are an agoraphobe, and you don't like hanging out with other humanoids. Uh, but no, all jokes aside, true. Vegas was that a lot of fun. spurious. Spurious on all accounts. Did I not come out with you uh, and, and the team? Screaming and shouting. Screaming and shouting. Oh, screaming and shouting. I stayed way longer than I planned. <laughs> we we had a great time with some new team members. We went out to Top Golf uh, in minutes. Vegas, which is exactly how you do Vegas. I was there for oh, two yeah. hours, Greg. Come on now. That's how you do oh, Vegas. You go out, you play uh, you play sky golf or uh, top golf. You do, you so do. We you had do. a great time. Yeah. It, it was a blast. It was an absolute blast. You know, Vegas was a lot of fun. I'm still drying out from my wild night in Vegas. I don't know how I, I could not have done a second night. There's absolutely no way I could have done a second night. But I, uh, I get back, right, Matt? And I, I show up and there's a big box in front of my, my front door. And I'm like, what in the hell did I order? You know, was I drunk on Amazon in Vegas and decided to order something? <laughs> Shit, how much did I spend? But no, no, that is not the case. I got this wonderful, beautiful thank you letter right here. The very nice writing on the inside. My friend uh, Nikki, she uh, she sent me a, a couple of her business cards and check it out, dude. She bought a couple of our products, and she wanted to thank us and, or thank me for doing a lot of like just extra follow up calls with her and answering specific questions since she didn't know how to thank me. I am overwhelmed with how honored and humbled I am. So I've got opened up this box, dude, and I have a, a thing no way. Cohiba cigars, right here, and which are freaking awesome cigars, by the way, and then this mat. These are coasters, and check it out, dude. The Real Estate Uncensored official coasters. I got a whole <laughs> stack of them right here. I literally walked around my house for probably 20 minutes, like with a like a goofy grin on my face, going, "I can't believe how cool this is. I can't believe how cool that is. That is so freaking amazing. I'm so that is so awesome." So, Nikki, knuckles to you, girl. I am more than honored. Thank you so much. This literally means the world to me. It is the, one of the kindest gestures, and I, I keep a stack of all my thank you cards because when you guys take a moment to thank us for what Matt and I do, it, it means the world to me. It means the world to Matt. And Matt, do you smoke cigars? Uh, no, I've never tried one. Mm -mm. Oh, what? God, dude. I know. I Ever? Know. I know. No, no, yeah, never. Pop up your cherry with a Cohiba. That's the and only way. You have to make it a Cohiba. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. I just... <laughs> These are great I just cigars. spent a week in Cancun smoking oh. those on the Mediterranean beach, and my Facebook picture is now the first Cohiba that I got down there. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> the best that way awesome. it's, it's the best cigars to smoke, I tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really Jay, are. Jay Niblick, CEO of Wise Hire, and uh, right. the the author of um, really the, the disc profile that I think most of our listeners and a lot of the people in real estate would be familiar with, which is the one that we tend to use on Tony Robbins' website. So you are the mastermind behind that and really the one that took all of that research and put it into more of a usable format, which is what we're going to talk about today. But just first of all, I just wanted to welcome you back to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So we had a blast, first of all, the last time that you were on. Uh, we had an amazing time talking about recruiting, and we we touched a little bit on disc profiles, but we didn't go super super deep. We were talking more about recruiting and how to lead people and setting them up for systems, and you know what some of the roles are on a real estate team. So first of all, we just wanted to uh, to refer people back to that. So if guys, if you're building a team or if you aspire to build a team, go back and watch Jay's original episode with us from a few weeks back when we talked about all the different roles and kind of where to get started and what to watch out for when you first start hiring people. But today, we're going to talk about it more from the perspective of the sales aspect, right? So actually getting more deals closed, because all the stuff that you talked about in, in terms of understanding disc profiles applies 
all the way up and down the line. I mean, it can even help your marriage. It can help your business relationships, business partnerships. I mean, it's, it's helped me to understand why I want to strangle Greg sometimes, and it under, helps me understand why in other areas we get along famously. Um, so it really can, the better we understand this, the better you can get at all of your relationships, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of the, uh, that's what we'll focus on today. Um, so first of all, I want you to tell people just a little bit in the case they missed the initial episode, what is Wise Hire? Wise Hire is about, you specialize in real estate and we're about helping you find the ideal talent. So part of that is getting a lot of applicants, as many as exist. And sometimes that's a small pool for that licensed buyer agent with five sides. You know I mean? The more parameters you have, it's harder to find, but we'll sort through that. And then we give them our disc index. And so doing that, the disc and the values, we can measure that against the top performers that we've studied. And the value to you guys is they show up in a nice rank ordered list. Excellent. You know, they're a hunter gatherer or they're an admin. Excellent. ISA. Excellent. Through poor. Um, you can see everything. You can see their disc profiles. But that's our objective is to try to help you make better hiring decisions using some scientific tools. Yep, and that's what we want to talk about today. So there was a there was a question that caught my eye in the um, the lead gen description objections group, and I think this one, I think a lot of people worry about this. Um, if they they may not be able to quite articulate it that way, but a lot of agents jump in and they're concerned about whether they have the right personality to be successful in real estate. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they look at some of the top performers, maybe some of the high producing kind of rainmaker agents. And they see some of the things that they do and the way that they are, and maybe they're super outgoing and gregarious and like, they're, they're like Greg, right? I mean, Greg is, has a super high energy level. He's a little crazy on camera and stuff like that. He's amped up obviously on his Facebook lives and people look at that and go, well, that's not me. Therefore, is there a hope for me? And this guy has a great question. He says, I was told my disc profile shows me as a high D and a high C that I would never last in real estate. Now, I don't know who told him that, but he says, is there any validity to this? Uh, this no. is a guy named Aaron. So why is there no validity to that? Um, it's crap. Uh, I, I, it's amazing how many times <laughs> you guys will see the same thing. I had a guy a month or two ago say, I was told by this expert that if the C was at even a point below the S, you couldn't ever hire him as an admin, which is literally just like smoking crack and giving advice shortly thereafter. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know who the hell it was that told him this, but they just need to you know, forget that they heard it. Yeah. I want to know what the number one, okay, so first off, there's trends. I mean, it's okay. pretty wide. You know, we see people that have some range and variance in what their personalities are in specific roles. But there's some okay. variables that we know are pretty certain and have some pretty statistically significant correlations, like sales is going to require somebody whose values drivers includes an economic that's very high. Right. Usually in, of those seven, very high and in first place is ideal. For commission work, that, that's a huge correlation. If you were to say it's seventh place is my economic driver, I'm going to go into a commission sales role. That's really far away and probably not very likely. But we see typical hunter gatherer outside salespeople who would fit more in a listing role oftentimes are DIs. But you know who oftentimes a lot of the team leaders are? DCs. Mm. It's a conflicted yep. pattern. It's a tough yep. pattern to have because it's completely antithetical. You have a, let's say a 90 and a 90 or whatever it is, they're very high and they're very powerful. They're pulling in opposite directions. But a lot of the team leaders, not rainmakers who don't want to necessarily lead an organization or deal with the operations and the systems and all the structure that has to take place to build a company, they, the DI struggle with that. Yeah. So their business can suffer from not having operations, not having systems, not having standard approaches that create consistent care and responsibilities. DCs make good team leaders. They can go sell, they can be aggressive. You know, if their eyes a 10, that could be a problem, but usually it's more in that mid range. And the C brings with it that constant beating of myself in a good way to always get better. I wanna be perfect, but I wanna do it yesterday. Um, we yeah, actually so see the DC trend in some fairly good Olympic athletes. And what's really? the first thing you oh, see? Okay. You say, hey, you just set a new world record. Eh, I could have been a little better on that last one. Right. <laughs> right. Pushing, pushing, pushing. So. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. And I can see that because when I see when I see some of the top team leaders, they are first of all, the the reason that they got there is because they're extremely driven and dominant, but 
in order to stay there and in order to really build out the systems that let, lets other people plug into their success, they have to be able to be good at building systems. And that's where that high C comes in. So that makes sense. That's kind of the engineering, analytical, that you want to break things apart, figure out what the best way is to do it, and then put it all back together again is kind yeah, of the way that I definition. think about that. Mm -hmm. And if you look so that at makes teams sense. that don't have that, you look at teams that have a DI, mm -hmm. uh, they go out and they augment the parts they don't have. They'll find a partner or they'll bring on somebody pretty quickly that has the C or the SC mm -hmm. and they depend on them like the second leg. You know, they don't yeah. just hop along one-leggedly. They, they need somebody that handles that other side of the fence to make sure that the business is growing and pretty early on. If not a mm -hmm. partner, then at least a very responsible employee who's got tons of responsibility. Admin sometimes seems like a misnomer because they put everything on these people uh, to handle right. all, you know, all the operations and details and stuff. And it's a huge burden yeah. and a big risk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I agree. Um, that's interesting. The world, we might get a chance to talk about the role of risk uh, a little bit deeper in another section. I don't want to go too far down that, that rabbit trail because there's a lot that we can say about that. Um, but I do think like when, when we talk about people who are successful, especially when it's anything that's self-directed, whether you're the rainmaker kind of agent, whether you're a listing agent, buyer agent, whatever, I mean, there's a certain amount of self-starting. Um, most teams are not systematized to the point where you can just sit back and they've got the appointment set for you, right? Um, I mean, yeah. there's a few, you know, there's a few yeah. of them out there, but most are not. Bigger, you know? older teams that have grown there older. slowly yes. over time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so if you're joining a younger team where you have some self-starting that has to be done, uh, I feel like the main indicator, if there's anything, is just how high your D is, and how driven you are, how how dominant, how, how you know, essentially how, how much do you move yourself forward without somebody else kicking you in the butt. Um, that's kind of the big indication. If I was to look at somebody's disk profile and determine whether they're going to be successful, you can just about build, if you really do your homework, you can kind of build a real estate business around yourself with any of the other components but if your yeah. d is super low like you're i don't know that you'd be driven enough to really to really fight through to build a business around yourself that suits your personality yeah that's one of those more outliers that's really hard to be you know like the seventh place sixth place economic as an entrepreneur yeah. you have to be the one person who's the center of that solar system yeah and, and you have to be always focused on roi how do we continue yep. to grow how do we continue to take two to four and four to eight and you mm -hmm. know that's tough to see people but it's, you know, there's some absolute black and whites there for sure. Yeah. Um, just too far afield. But yeah. I think you, you mentioned real yeah. quick, the key is with teams, and this is why independents struggle so much, with mm -hmm. teams, build the team around your weaknesses. Yes. You know, uh, I, yep. I mentioned, I think, on the last call, that study we did, the 197,000-person study. And um, it, we looked at the best performers all around the world in all kinds of roles. And the ones who were best were the ones that were the most authentic. You know, it was those two, mm -hmm. two, two trait, key traits. They knew their self strengths and weaknesses, self-awareness, and they were authentic to it. So inauthenticity would be that guy with the DC saying, I gotta be a DI. I'm gonna go out yeah. and become a DI. I'm gonna pretend I'm a DI. I'm gonna model myself after <laughs> Greg or Matt or yeah. this guy or that guy, because it's working for him. Yes. You're not him. Dude, there's so much of that. It, dri it drives me nuts, and when, mostly because I, I just see how much it hurts people. Okay. which is going out and, and imitating what other people are doing. Because, I mean, if you've been around the business long enough, you realize that something works for everybody. I don't care what it is. It, it can be Snapchat, Instagram. It can be mailing out books. It can be door knocking. Like, literally everything has been done. Somebody's been able to make it work. But that doesn't mean that it works for everybody. It doesn't mean that it works best for your personality. And even if you could, it doesn't mean that you want to build your entire business around it. Because if it doesn't come naturally, it's going to be really tough. You know, you gave the example of the, the guy who's a DC. So for those that aren't familiar with the DISC profile, that would be someone that's very driven, but also very systematic, right? And you mentioned a lot of team leaders are that way. Um, but if you try to like go out and be like Greg, like you're on Facebook Live three times a day, like Greg is, and you're you're doing you base your entire business around outbound calling, or like let's say with events where Greg is hosting, you know, monthly networking events. If you're a DC. Man, those are painful for you. <laughs> if you're a low, if you're a low people person, like if that, if you don't feed off of the energy of being in a room full of people where you're the center of attention, like I mean, I, I can. Greg is like a fish in water. I'm like a fish who has learned to be in water. Like I can do it for about two hours and then a drain. I gotta go read a book and have some coffee. Like I've learned to be that way. But Greg is like a fish in water. Um, yeah. What I don't want is people, you know, not understanding themselves. And then trying to go out and be Greg, 
and then massively falling on their face because it was never what they were supposed to be doing anyway. So Greg, let's let's go back to you since you had some technical difficulties and just hopped back on. Yeah, um, it crashed I mean, on me right when we went on live. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it is it is true. I mean, like I, I, I'm trying to push you out of the nest, get you into, you know, being in social a little bit more and that you will do it. You're good at it, but you're, that's, you get drained from that. And so, you know, it's, it's the same difference. Like if I tried to go be you, like me sitting down and writing, what are you trying to write a hundred words or a thousand words for your book every day? A thousand. Um, thousand words. That sounds like absolute fucking torture. I mean, please pull my fingernails out with rusty pliers before I have to go write a thousand words a day. That sounds torturous. But again, that's where you get your energy. That's where you thrive. Right. You like breaking the process down. That is, that is where you are shine. And, you know, you put me in front of the house, you know, where, you know, dog and pony show all day long. I'm the happiest guy on planet earth. I had a buddy of mine tell me that he's going to be throwing a huge event with really big names, you know, highlighting, uh, headlining this thing. And he wants to throw me on stage in front of like 5,000 people. And yeah. he's like, would that be okay? I'm like, dude, that's like Christmas for me. Are you shitting me? You put me in front of that <laughs> many people. I'll, do, I'll be on a cloud nine for like a month after that. And before that, but it's true. I know where I'm good and I know where I'm not good. And that's why Matt, what we talk about a lot is the, what's your, what's your special power, your superpower. Um, where yeah. do you, where can you shine in that, that other people don't know that you shine and then build off of that. Don't do the calls if you're, if you're not good at them. We were talking today, Matt, with one of our gentlemen um, who's on our team and he was expressing some, some concerns about not being comfortable doing a few different actions. And so you and I were working with him to help him find that. So his, we need to figure out where his DISC is and then go on, you know, go on his strengths. I mean, yes. I mean, I, I think one of the questions is, is how do you, I even identify what, where you are with your DISC. I mean, it, like you said in the beginning, so I was listening to you guys, so I wouldn't miss the show um, <laughs> off air. I'm like desperately, you know, listening to the, pro to the podcast going, did I miss anything good? Are they missing me? I don't think they're missing me. Uh-oh, I better get back on quickly. That's right. We massively flopped without you, Greg. <laughs> Noticed you were gone the second you were out. <laughs> you guys are both full of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I want to, we talked about, we did an introvert's, you know, guide to success, right? And how a lot of times I've learned I need to shut the fuck up and let the other people talk yeah. like I'm not doing right now. And this is where the problem is because I'll just chatter like a drunk monkey on, on, on a tree branch when in reality, you know, if you just learn, you know that this isn't where you should be or you should need to dial something back or pick something up, then I think that that's yeah. – I mean, well, shit, let's well, just let's, start let's off. Start how do you get on that? Yeah. yeah, so let, let's start with just the assessment and what you can learn from it and why it's important for people just to understand themselves first. Well, I think um, the assessment, you know, the DISC and the values, everybody refers to as DISC and DISC index, but it's mm -hmm. both sciences and it's the why and the how. So the self-assessment piece, the self-awareness piece, it's crucial. You guys are talking about it. You're living it. Um, comfort zones are cool. I'm a fan of pushing outside of comfort zones. But if you look at like a, a bell curve, you shouldn't live over in the way off your comfort zone. You know, flexing and, and experimenting and growing is wonderful but you have to still be true to yourself. So trying to completely re-engineer yourself starts, avoiding that starts with saying, what are my profile skills? What are my natural talents? What are my behaviors? Um, and I can try to bend outside of those a little bit here and there, but the more success is gonna come, the greater success is gonna come from being more authentic and true. So taking the profile, you can take it up on Wise Hire with a Z, W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E. You can take it there for free. It's right up on the top bar. Um, you know, you can just go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to take this thing and email it directly to you instantaneously if you don't have it. Um, and read it and learn it, you know, and get to understand it. The mindset of learning that has to be different when you start, though, because the most common thing we see is somebody starts reading it and doing what you two said you've seen others do. It is the most common trend. And that is, I'm going to look at this like a school student. What am I good at? Cool. Screw it. I'm already good at it. I, don't, I won't pay any attention to that. What do I suck at? And how do I fix it? Yes. And requiring, yeah. you know, I have to fix myself requires the presupposition that I'm broken. And that's a suck ass way to wake up every morning and say, <laughs> I'm broken. How do I fix it? Um, yeah. And you're not, you know, we all have different strengths and, and, and weaknesses. And a lot of people, there's this misnomer that, well, the most successful people have a shorter weakness list. You know, the bullet list on <laughs> strengths is longer and the <laughs> bullet list on what they suck at is shorter. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you, it's every bit as long as yours, 
they just make sure that they don't have to depend on those weaknesses primarily to succeed. So the guy who is, when I wrote both my books, actually, I transcribed them. I mean, I recorded them. I spoke. I can talk. I can't type, and I'm not a good writer. And so I spoke into a recording, a microphone, and I recorded everything and had it transcribed. I initially started trying to write, and it was so hard for me that it actually broke my flow, screwed it all up. I mean, it was horrible stuff. Like, thank God nobody ever actually saw it, you know, because it's just trying to do that. It was so inauthentic for me that it's like a low C trying to make an Excel spreadsheet and actually add up numbers accurately. And I heard him say it drains you, Matt, to do that. That's the key. When you're in your authentic flow, you're energized. It actually creates more energy. Yep. When you're outside of that, it drains you. So even if you mm-hmm. can do it, by the time you get out of in front of that audience after an hour on stage, you literally need to go to a hotel room and just crash because you're physically wasted, tired, mm-hmm. mentally and physically. So yep. taking the profile is the first step. But that mindset when you go in to start reading page one is what do I – have as talents and how do I leverage those more? How do I create responsibilities that depend on those talents and how do mm-hmm. I avoid depending on the things I suck at instead of trying to fix them? Cause I'm never going to mm-hmm. fix them. Yeah. You know, it's the, yeah. you know, people always talk about like, you got to fix your weaknesses. You got to get better on your weaknesses when in reality it is possibly the worst advice you could ever give someone because you know, if some, if you have a weakness here, that means that's someone else's strength. You need to build on your strengths and pay for people to do your weaknesses because that's their strength there. Yeah. Then, you, then you're strong across the board without having to lose time learning a skill set you really don't want to learn. Like, Jay, you and I are very much the same way. I mean, I, if I ever had to write something, it's going to look like, sound like a third grader wrote it, look like a drunk, you know, drunk college kid wrote it when you know, with the scribbles, and it wouldn't be – it wouldn't be – something that would be valued of anybody. But if I can talk, that's why I do voice messages all the time or video messages. Cause like you, I can talk, I can do that. I can go on for 30 minutes without taking a breath and put out content. Then if Matt comes in behind that and he can reorganize everything cause he's like, okay, this is a dumpster fire. Let's put this here and move that over here and do that there. And it comes out something good. So if you guys, are not, if you don't, like, I don't have, I don't really have the patience to work with sellers. I love buyers. I don't really have the patience for sellers because I can't take um, entitlement. And a lot of sellers have entitlement. Not all of them. A lot of them have entitlement issues because it's their house, their, listen, their blah. When buyers are like, dude, I'll hang out with anybody. You're cool. You're cool. You're cool. I'll hang out with all y'all. I enjoy that environment. So I know my strengths. But my team is really good with the, 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 the sellers. And that's fine. You're not going wrong anywhere by yeah. by working one of the others. Find yeah. those that love to do what you loathe to do, as we like to say. Oh, That's why teams like... crush it. Teams don't do five times better because there's five people on the team. Five mm. times more than one independent. Teams are some order of magnitude more effective mm. because of what you just said. Now, right. you know, that said, this is like practice management and how you're going to run yourself. Matt, you talked earlier about how do we use this information for sales? It is the one temporary suspension of this rule where salespeople, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, you're point A and you're going to point B and the prospect is point B. So when I'm selling, I, it doesn't matter what I am. I have to know what I am so I can counter, but I have to adapt to them. If I'm selling to a high C, I'm not going to get that sale if I just treat them like they're a low C like me. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not going to likely work, or it's greatly reduced, the odds are. Yeah. So there's the one exception. Before. But that's okay. You know, For those few minutes or even hours collectively that you're interacting with that individual, that's adaptation. And I can stand up and say, you know what, I normally would want to go a hell of a lot faster, but I know I'm dealing with a high S and a secondary C, so I got the three-touch sale. You know, as the lady in Alabama told me once, let me set with it a while, son. You know, she's going <laughs> to, it's the three touch sale, first place yeah. senses, late adopters, slow, methodical. They're going to want to get comfortable with something. I'll have the mm-hmm. first discussion and then put it out there and, mm-hmm. and no pressure other than when do we meet again? Mm-hmm. Second time, a little bit further into discussion, maybe broach the topic of closing a decision, the next call and that third call, I can maybe now start to expect them to kind of close something. 
that would drive me crazy. But I'm okay adapting for those 15 minutes I'm interacting with them to meet them because the customers will buy in their natural state. If they're having to adopt or adapt or modify or get out of their comfort zone, the further out of their comfort zone they are, the further away conversion is. Yeah. Hmm. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a whole different way of really looking at that. It's not about not all about you. It's about understanding your, your client and how they operate. Because as soon as you know where, what wheelhouse they're in, then you can speak to that. And it, it, sales isn't all about everything with you. It's about everything about them. You know, that's why I ask all my clients, you know, how do you like to communicate? Who should I be communicating? When should I communicate? You know, I, I, I outline a lot of those things. Because a lot of times in real estate sales, people, they screw up because they t either call the husband or call the wife or whoever the point person is. Um, and, and when they should be texting them or emailing them or maybe Facebook message or whatever that point of communication is, we get out of sync with them. And I think that's where we need to learn to ask more questions. Is that, Jay, have you seen a lot of people become more successful by just simply asking more questions and allowing the information to flow into them versus pushing everything out that they think that they need to give to somebody? I mean, what have you seen in yeah. regards to that? Questioning your way to the sales has been, you know, a, a top tactic for these kind of intellectual sales for forever. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a commodity sale. It's not a 10 minute sales cycle at Verizon or something. Um, it's not an 18 month governmental sales cycle either, but questioning your way to the sale. What happens in our belief, in my belief at least, and when you question your way to the sale, you're letting them drive what that personality is going to want. Mm. But they're gonna tell you if they, t if they need a ton of detail, if they need a lot of attention, if they wanna take a slower pace, um, if I could get every single prospect to take a profile, I'd be in heaven. You know, mm. I mean, if I can find a reason to say, look, as part of us working together, there's some questions that I want to know so I can serve you better. Uh, and if, if I can get you to take this one little profile, that'd be awesome because I can understand how you prefer to communicate, how risk averse you are. Should I bring you houses that are in this price range or not? Should I bring ones that maybe don't have these requirements? It'd be wonderful because if I know the values that's not my motivational style that becomes my buying motive hmm. you know am i a high economic think about what are the odds hmm. that i'm going to hit all the right motives you know if hmm, we believe right. in the science here and if we believe the validity and the reliability of these things and statistically they show that way then i know that i need to get the best resonance i want to understand is this person an economic motivated person so hiring hmm. this easy um, it's tough to do unless I can get a prospect to take a profile, but I, you know, I'm going to make sure that all they're worried about is ROI. You know, this is the best house for your money. You're going to get more of your things than you are for anything else. If they're a high aesthetic for last place economic, they're not so much worried about the money. They want to know that it's prettier and it has all the aesthetic, nice accoutrement that they're looking for. If they're a high theoretical, they're going to want to have a whole lot of documentation and, you know, <laughs> same thing with behaviors that becomes their buying style. So behaviors at least I can get ahead of. At least with behaviors, just watching them, I can start to learn to put them into maybe even two buckets, which could be a huge benefit. Are they a okay. DI or are they an SC? You know, that's the first bifurcation there. It's like, all right, they're fast paced, they're really talkative, um, you know, they're not asking a lot of low how-to questions, it's a lot of 30,000 foot big questions. They want answers fast. They don't want a lot of detail. Boom. I can pretty much tell from the handshake, the way I meet them, how fast paced they were, even emails leading up to it. Are they more of a DI, you know, group one? Yep. And I can approach those people very differently. Early adopters, disorganized, and all the things we can learn about did. Um, creative, open with, you know, taking risk, more open to being early adopters, first mm -hmm. adopters, like, hell, it's never ever been made before. I want to be the first person in line at Apple, uh, yep. you know. Or if they go into the SC bucket, and you can see this, you know, from the handshake to the way they talk on the phone to their tone, are they harder charging or softer, quieter, paced? And if they're an SC, I can start to behave towards them in a way that's slower, more nurturing, more uh, caring, more supportive. I know they're later adopters, probably less risk of, or more risk averse. Yeah. So I can you take that. More One detailed, last point, more point, analytical. Right to your point, though, if I. I can, on a macro level, I can at least understand who I am and put myself in a position to deal with buyers or sellers that's probably more my preference. I think you said it's beautiful. Yeah. 
yeah. if you know that you're likely to deal with people who want longer term buyers relationships and have to look at 35 houses that aren't going to like the HGTV, here's your three pick one, you know, <laughs> you can at least specialize in that area where you don't have to adopt every single sale. Yes. And that's a very, very good point. Cause I think Greg, one of the things that I like about the way that the way that you run your social media, especially when you get people that come off of your Facebook lives and, and reach out to you about, you know, buying or selling uh, people that you, you know, people that research you first before they meet with you or people that you meet on the phones where you have a natural rapport. I think you have a pretty good indication and they have a good indication of what you're like. So if mm -hmm. they're willing to meet with you, they're kind of self-selecting to an extent, right? Oh, it's yeah. not like you, it's not like you, Greg called them out of the blue and adapted his personality just to kind of be a chameleon to suit whatever is their taste. Like Greg's pretty open with, Hey, this is who I am. This is, this is how I operate my business. This is how I do social media. So by the time people work it their way down to actually meeting face to face with them, uh, for the most part, I think they've kind of self-selected that they're okay dealing with. They may not be a high D high I, but they are okay with him being a high D high I, and they know what they're getting into when they meet with you, Greg. <laughs> yeah, I had a, uh, I had someone I met uh, at Top Golf, and I was introduced, and she like, wait a minute, you're the guy that cusses all the time. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> And so we hit it off. We're like two peas in the pods. They call you Gary happened. right afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Is your name Gary V? No, it's Greg McDaniel. Oh, okay. I get all those G's mixed up. That's right. Um, but, uh, you know, but she, we'd already had, a, you know, she'd already kind of gotten to know me based upon what I've done. And she accepted me. She's like, okay, I like you. You can be in my tribe. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I mean, if I think being inauthentic is one of the biggest problems people have because like you said Matt people need to be a feel like they need to be a chameleon and at some point you do but not to when it's on, 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 you know, inauthentic to who you are your brand your culture your tribe your people because if you once you identify that what that is what your tribe is dude it doesn't matter what everybody else is you'll put you you'll you'll be just fine as long as you stay true to who you are because people will be drawn to you like a moth to light because they're like oh my god you're like me Yep. You yeah. know, you can use this same technology or psychology in a polarized way. Um, you saying we should drive through. off the clients who aren't good for us, Jay? Yeah. Yes. I would, now, I this is risky. I would never do that. This is risky, yeah. And you have to get to a certain size where you can be picky enough. Right. But if in your messaging you start thinking, what are key words to attract the people who are really going to like to work with me? Uh -huh. They're going to have a better experience. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to make better referrals. My my net promoter score, if you will, is going to be much higher with these folks. Yes. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I can kind of push away those folks that are probably not going to like me, not going to appreciate yep. me. Um, yeah, because so. here's the thing. Like, you can be a chameleon, like, in the sales presentation, and we'll help you close more deals. But what if you have to work with them from contract to close, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with a high SC and you're a hard-charging, hard-driving, type A, impatient person, you've got other clients to where, oh, my God. You will want to shoot yourself. And Greg, that is you. Because if you do not have Eileen, uh, well, you just told somebody today, you wouldn't even be in the business. Oh, no. If you didn't I, have Eileen to do that. Fuck no. Are you yeah. kidding me? There's been so many times that, like, there's been agents that have drawn me to the point of, a, you know, wanting to commit homicide because mm -hmm. of their, just the way they operate their business. And I'm like, Eileen, that's you. Okay, have fun with that. You just put, put that thing to bed, and I'm going to go do something over here, which is not going to involve bloodshed. Yes. And... You know, and it, there you it, don't have to worry about that, you know, because if you have a team that's got every mm -hmm. specialist that you need, you have a universal draw in, then you're filtering them off to the person who's not going to want to blow their head off and having to deal with this individual for a third time just that day. But yeah. if you do, we have seen people that have put out a message that's using both sides of the scale. They'll use keywords to try to attract the right personality. You know, you're a DI looking for other DIs. So let's mm -hmm. keep it in these two buckets, you know. Okay. We love helping clients who are on the move and aggressively looking for the best house. You know, we'll fight to get the best deal, move quickly, uh, you know, not risk averse, those kind of folks. If you start using the opposite, you know, and you can actually use words that would design to push away the SCs, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. we're going to take it to the edge, with brand new cutting technologies, doing things Ooh. the way no one's ever done before. That ass ain't picking up that phone. Nope. You just, you know, <laughs> you just basically said, I'm going to put you in hell if you contact me. So, <laughs> no, I don't know what it was about him, but I didn't click on his ad because it had all these key words like, you know, cutting edge and never done before and unproven. And they're like, why the hell would anyone use you? You know, the eyes are like, <laughs> we know what's a great point. You know.
Yeah. So it's you know what we got to do? We got to use this in dating profiles. I mean, how uh, many bad dates could we eliminate <laughs> by just using the <laughs> identifying the type of person we want to date? <laughs> Uh, Matt mentioned it early on. The single most common question I get is immediately, outside of business, could you do this with my spouse? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Universally, you know. Yep. Like, well, this is cool. But, hey, real quick, do you mind if I give this to my spouse? You yes. Know what? Oh man. I used it was, to. Yeah, it was super I used helpful. To, I used to do this when um, I was the trainer at my last brokerage, and uh, I would say, okay, I want you guys here the four, here, you know, DISC. I want you to pick the two that are more dominant for you. And there's no wrong answer. People would be like, oh, I'm this and this. You know, but, you know it, was a very, it was a very simplified 10,000 foot look at the DISC. I said, now just to have fun, now identify your spouse. And everyone's like, oh, I'm like, makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> they're like, yeah. I throw the opposite of me. I'm like, yeah, because if you had two high D's and I high I's, it's going to be a dick measuring contest, you know, at all times. You know, I've, I've dated a couple of girls that were high D, high I's, and oh, my God, I just just go away. It's just a nonstop, con you know, competition. I'm like, I need someone who just likes me and not, not, not want to have a competition with me all the time. Oh, man. But, I mean, values hmm? with relationships, with couples, values is almost always better well aligned you know so mm -hmm. why you do things that's great you know i'm a high economic she's a high economic or you're a high altruistic she's a high altruistic or aesthetic or having some overlap of the values is usually a positive and behaviors usually opposites attract is an old cliche for a reason mm. it's true you're absolutely right mm -hmm. Greg. you know i mean if you're dating somebody who's exactly like you you usually will could be a loggerhead real quickly and it's fun to see and, and then you get into a it's no different than a business context in a significant relationship you're a team you're partners mm -hmm. and so in a household that works really well because mm -hmm. all bases are covered when they right. start having kids yeah. and raising kids and doing all this other stuff it's really cool just like running a business to have you know if you just like think about managing a business with you know two di's no sc's you know, nothing <laughs> would ever get done in the company yeah. i feel like the project's getting like started correct yeah <laughs> but never completion of anything. Yeah, I, yeah I, exactly. I've, been in those, yep. I've been in those types of business relationships, and it's really exciting and fun, and we're going to do all this shit and change the world. Shit, where are we? I don't know. Yeah. Did you make a spreadsheet? What spreadsheet? They have spreadsheets? Ah, oh, crap. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Forget that spreadsheet. I have a new idea anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> Oh my God! I wouldn't need a spreadsheet. I already called it something better. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You do. I do that to Matt. Which all is the funny because I've had to, I've had to like, um, like my my S and C have had to come up um, to compensate yeah. because I just like I I've just been forced to to adapt. But anyway, there was a <laughs> there was a good comment here. We've got Leslie uh, is watching. She's here in San Diego. She said she's actually using you guys right now for recruiting uh, an ISA in real estate. And right now we are blowing her mind, uh, helping her uh, understand the disc better, which is awesome. Um, but let's talk a little bit about, uh, you, you mentioned the relationships and, and how we can use it to strengthen our own. Let's talk about a little bit in selling to, a, you know, a, a couple who's in a relationship and, and how we kind of need to bridge those waters. Greg, let's start with you because you mentioned you're not a huge fan of, of dealing with sellers. And I'm sure part of this is the, the husband and wife dynamic of listing the home and then actually getting through the transaction. Because you got usually two people who are opposites, right? So you're... You're trying to sell to the one. You got to figure out who the decision maker is. All this stuff. What's what's the dynamics that you're thinking about when you're in a listing consult? Fuck. What am I doing here? I don't. This is not fun for me. That was just a side note. Um, but in, rea in reality, first off, dude, Leslie's my girl. She and I and Josh, we got fucking weird down in in uh, in Vegas. And I say weird. I mean, we had a freaking blast. She's a super cool chick, by the way. Um, and I talked to her this morning, I believe. Oh, you did. Your, your, your life is now better. Your awful. life is now better. Oh, awesome. so God, my son. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so one of the things that, I, that, that, that one of the reasons why for me sometimes buy, sellers are, are not as fun is because they're much more detail-oriented on a step-by-step -step process of this has to happen here, here, and here. You know, it's, that, that is not my strong suit. My strong suit is 
fast and furious. You know, let's go look at houses. Let's get out there. Let's write a strong offer. Let me manipulate the other agent in a good way so that my client can get the deal. It's a game for me on the buy side. On the sell side, it's a little more of a laborious step-by-step -step process that I have to go through. Um, now, I love my sellers. I mean, I'm never going to hate on a seller. If you want to send me a referral, don't get me wrong. I would never, you know, not treat them with the utmost respect and professionalism. But just if I had to choose one, the buyers are more fun because it's not so step-by-step. -step. And that's why there's Eileen. That's why there's my business partners. That's why the processes are in place to take care of them who are more, you know, they're, 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 they're more, I don't know, they're more suited for that fit. Um, but in all honesty, that's what I'm thinking about. It's like, and I am always second-guessing myself. I'm like, shit, did I miss a step? Shit, did I do that? Uh oh when in reality, I'm not missing anything. I mean, I've done this for almost 20 years. I mean, it's not, it's not, I'm not changing, you know, like I'm not curing cancer. I'm not changing the world. I'm just selling a damn house. And that's where I think I need to get out of my own way, my own head, and allow myself to let the process run. And because my D, high D, high I, I wanted it already done 20 minutes ago. But they need a process. They need a handhold. They need that security. I don't have to stop and reassure myself that, you know, and tell myself that every single time I work with a seller, like, Greg, slow down, pump the brakes, explain what's going on, you know, take the time with them, turn on your S&C, you know, turn off your D and your I, and just mellow out. So, I mean, that's, that's where my mindset is when it comes to sellers, Johnson. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I like it. Um, got you, got you just, <laughs> just going through some of the, the questions on lead gen about the disc profile and, um, and Greg, I don't know if you've noticed that there there is um, a belief that a couple of people mentioned that uh, that Fizbo's might be a little high on the C uh, yeah. spectrum. I don't know if that does that make any like does that register? Yeah, I mean, because well, with Fizbo's, you know, they don't know what they don't know, and they need everything explained to them because one, they think they know everything, right? Then you have to, in your words, summarily smack them and let them know they they do not know everything. Then you have to take the time to re educate them on everything they didn't know and change their viewpoint on what they don't know. So that can take a lot of time. I mean, because mm -hmm. their 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 thought pattern is going left when in reality everything's going right, and they don't they can't seem to get this deal this home sold the right way for the most money. It's because they don't understand that they're going the wrong direction. Then it's have to take away the ego of them not being right, right? You know, and not selling it and not having that bragging point of they save twenty thousand dollars on commission or whatever it's going to be. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's going to be a labor of love, and I mm -hmm. mean that in the in almost honest sense of that because you're not the love on these people's. Yeah, and that's why I've never done Fizbo's because I think that's always been like, I have to explain everything to them again. <laughs> you talk about cool. self-selecting, you know, just the fact that they have that brand stamped on them is a self-selection in and of itself. They're mm -hmm. doing what they do, bring the values into play. Oftentimes, and it's hard to tell, but you really could probably get this through questioning, simple questioning like, why did you list for yourself? And mm -hmm. I'm looking normally for an individualistic, a political, or an economic. They're either high economic because they're like, screw you, I ain't giving you my money. This is my house. I can sell it because I can do this stuff too. And why would I give you all that money? Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about the bottom line. Normally, yeah, high C can be a problem, but they can be DCs. So mm -hmm. sometimes they're just bulls in a china shop that think they can do everything and they got all the details. If they say that it's all about the money, probably a high economic. You know, that makes a difference as to how you're going to approach them. High individualistics are nonconformists. They don't like doing what everybody else does. They want to do their own thing and sell their own house their own way. So I wanted to be in control, either a high political or a high individualistic. And it's an easy enough question to ask, you know, can I ask why you wanted to sell the house by yourself to begin with? Because understanding that, maybe we can help. You know, mm -hmm. I want to know what your motivations are so I can try to make sure that we keep those in mind. So it's a perfectly innocuous and, and common sense question to ask. It doesn't sound like you're doing anything untoward. Mm -hmm. But with that answer coming back, that can usually indicate, yeah, you know, they're a high economic. So everything you pitch from then on out, their buyer motive is monetary, ROI. Mm. But if they come back with, I really want to control everything, I like making sure that I was in charge of anything, high political, and either a D or a C. That's the one problem with it. It's tough to figure out, you know. High Cs can act like a super high D in the right environment. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, really? Why do you say that? Like, what, what's what's the right environment? When 
nothing's going right. When every rule's being broken and the shit's just hit the fan, Cs can jump up out of their seat and become very, what seems dominant. But it's really because, God bless it, this is not working the way it's supposed to. Hmm. You know, we were at a, to go a into big, problem fixing mode. Yeah, like that's it. We were up at this big retreat in Banff, and um, it was a bunch of people in a big, huge conference and all this stuff. And there was a workshop that was taking on when I first arrived, and I was walking in with some of the lead guys. And this lady had gotten up. They were a ropes kind of course, and they were suspending people over from like five feet up this pile, and they had to hang upside down and. The team was moving them around and trying to grab the parts to put it together. And it was just a team building exercise. And they'd been going on for about 30 minutes and they were just screwing it up. I mean, it, it was bass backwards all the way. And every other team was advancing and ahead of them. And they're just right here in last place, you know, going to be voted off the island. And this, when we walked up, this woman was just large and in charge. I mean, she had the clipboard and she was pointing at people and she's telling, sit down, you get over there, you pull that rope, hold this, quiet, stop talking. You know, and the guy with me goes, well, there's a high D, for example, mm -hmm. and look at her profile later. And she was a massive C. The D was mm -hmm. maybe 30, 35. It wasn't like gone. But when she sat there for 30, 40 minutes and it was just wrong, 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 you know, and like the head just eventually <laughs> blew up and she was like, stop, you're all fucking crazy. Nobody <laughs> but as soon as she got all of her boxes checked. Mm -hmm. She was okay. Back, back to normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, right. I know. I, I've, I have seen that happen before, uh, and it, it, now that I know that they can, they can switch, you know, and they can take control when needed. Is that kind of a flight, fight or flight scenario as well? Like they're not going to run away; they're oh, going to yeah. fight their way through this thing. They're so desperate for that accuracy. You know, a dominant C is desperate for compliance. That's the C. You know. That's the original term. Mm -hmm. So comply with the God blessed rules. And if you don't, <laughs> and those can be either be her rules, his rules, or the world's rules, but right. you only get so much leeway before they're going to bitch back you and say, get back in line. <laughs> you broke three of them. That's too many. And they can really be nasty and bite like a, like a dog that normally would never do that, but pushed into the corner. And it's amazing how quick that can happen from somebody who's a really high D, low C, because they're sensitivity to those details is so low that they don't even think many were missed. They're like, "Why? Well, okay, I was 10 minutes late and I forgot to bring the one of five pages. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Really like, well, I'm here. That's the important thing, right? Like, yeah. let's move, let's move on. <laughs> I don't think it's that bright a light, but to the person with massive migraines, who's staring at a strobe light, you know, to them, they're super sensitive to that stuff. And they're just very, very sensitive. If you can start to ask, the, the big question is, just think about this in your prospects. If you can get them to take a profile, go for it. You know, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I've seen people that actually do that and say, part of this relationship, this is a significant relationship. You know, you're selling a $750,000 house. We want to do this right. Um, or a $300,000. It's still very significant to them. We want to get this right. Do me a favor. I like to use these assessments with my customers. Here's mine. If you want, take yours. All it's going to do is help us communicate, and I can appreciate what you like, how you like it, why you like it, and I will be better at servicing you as my client. If they do that, great. It's 10 minutes. It's online, you know. Well, I mean, what, what, what would be the downside for them not doing it? But, I mean, this comes into client control. So if you were to take this and say, okay, Jay, you know, this is how I run my business, you know, just so that we can communicate the most effectively for you. I'm going to ask you to go to this site. Here's the link. Please just go to DISC so that I know how to speak with you, speak with you and to you so that I can be the most efficient I possibly can so we can get your house sold for the highest and best price or get you into buy a price for buy a home for the lowest and best price in the yep. shortest amount of time. Would that be okay with you if we were the most efficient uh, for you? Yeah. And, Whoever, who's going to say, like, no, don't be efficient for me. No, please waste my time. You know, please piss me off. I, I think it's worth it. What you'll see is self-selection self there. D&Is will take it just for shits and giggles because they're kind of curious anyway. Um, <laughs> we are curious creatures. will be the later adopters who will be like, wait, you mentioned personality, but you're a sales guy. I don't, why are you going to be looking? At, I don't know. You know, so they'll be a little bit standoffish. <laughs> Worst case scenario ask the question, do I think these people are in a DI bucket or an SC bucket? From day one, you can start to watch trends. So D is about pace, you know, problems, and how I tend to make some decisions. But if the pace is fast, if the details are low, 
or small or scarce. If they're very decisive from talking, from emails, texts, you can start to really put a picture together fairly quickly. Are they left or right? You know, this is a really gross dissection. It's one or two. And it's not nearly the great detail you'd love to get, mm-hmm. but it's better than nothing because at least then you're in half of a hemisphere correct, knowing, okay, they're probably a DI, and that means I can probably serve them better by treating them like this, talking to them like this. And you have to know your point A because if I don't have to adapt because they're also a DI, I'm probably okay with that. I can be myself much more naturally, flow with them, and I don't have to be thinking as much when I'm engaging with them. If I know they're an SC, and I'm a DI, before I text them, before I email them, before I call them, I need to stop, put my SC hat on, think like an SC, and try to adapt to them. Getting to point B is impossible if I don't know where my origination point is, my point A. Yes. That's you know, am I headed south, east, north, or west? From mm-hmm. where am I coming? Hmm. Yep. I like that. Yep. I like that a lot. I mean, it's so simple, but yet not a lot of us do it because we go to our default of whatever we are. We assume like, oh, Matt, Matt's going to be like me. He came to me, came to my open house. He must be high D, high I. And, you know, it, that's couldn't be further from the truth. That's actually pretty ignorant and rude of you to make that assumption when you have no no basis. And how are you supposed to be like, I, I take care of my clients the best because I blah, 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 when you have no idea who they are and how to serve them. Yeah. That's, that's like, very true. That's like someone coming in, you know, walking into a supermarket and you're in the meat section and you're like, that, that guy looks like he needs a T-bone. When in reality, they're a vegan and you just didn't take the answer, you know, any time to ask him any questions. You're like, hey, dude, I got a great deal on, on T-bones. Come on, homie, buy the T-bone. Got the T-bone. T-bone. Hey, who, ha. Yeah. And they don't bite at it because, yeah. well, no, no, I didn't mean to say bite, but you know what I mean. Yeah, funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't bite on it. Ooh. <laughs> wild tangent. All right, you can tell Greg is a DI just by that that last 15 seconds of the show. Okay, so Jay, let's talk about uh, <laughs> how people can reach out to you and why they should reach out to Wise Hire. Uh, you know, reach out to us if you need to grow your team. I think that's the key. If you try to bring out some people, bring on some people, try to figure out fleshing out where that team goes and who's going to be on it, let's help you. We're glad to do it. Take the profile for free. It's on the website, wisehire.com, big blue banner right across the top. Y'all can take that disc profile yourself. And in the context of this discussion, I think that's crucial. Learn your strengths. Learn your weaknesses. Learn what your motives are. Learn what your talents or behavioral skills are, the why and how, why you like to do things, how you like to do things. And we've seen pretty good variation. And we've seen some people that aren't necessarily first place economic, but they're high altruistic. They can still be quite successful, as long as it's not, you know, fifth, sixth, or seventh place economic. They can still be pretty successful by making sure that when they wake up in the morning, they know what's going to get me more excited is to go help that family get that perfect house. They take the altruistic hunger and make sure they're feeding off of that. So just another example. Um, And that's why we're there. That's why we give the DISC profile for free. Because whether you're growing a team or not, that knowledge is so powerful for your success mm. that, that yeah. we want to make sure everybody has it. It's not just for a customer. Yeah. Well, I put 100%. the link in the show notes, guys, for you guys watching live with us right now. Uh, go into the show notes. I put it in there. I will put it back in there again. So it's W-I-Z-E hire.com. Um, big blue banner at the top. Guys, it's super easy to find. I mean, I'm going to go take it again, like you said, <laughs> just for shits and giggles. Like, I'm a high D, high I. I'm like, ooh, let's see if anything changed. Um, <laughs> that's actually. <laughs> that, I mean, like, that's your, actually... like your I ate your D? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, but, I mean, can, can people change? I mean, can their DISC change over time? This is something I just thought about. Slowly. Really? Um, I, I told, according to the term, glacially dynamic. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's, which guy, it sounds anal retentive, I know. Uh, and, 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 and I have a little C, phrase for a concept, yes. Glacially yeah. dynamic for moving slowly. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. There's some misnomers out there that other companies train disc and stuff, and they say, once you're 18, 19, it's carved in stone. It's not true. It's bullshit. I do not behave today the same I did when I was 16, thank God. Oh, but yeah. it's five years. 10 year kind of curve, like, like a river changing course, if, you know, or not seeing a kid for five years, you don't really appreciate that change. So it's almost a, a moot point. 
You're not going to go in and take a training program and say, I will be successful in this business if I'm this. So now I need to go fix this, and I'll read a book and take a program on how to be a high C or how to be a low C. You're not going to change it anytime soon. So. Yeah, that is the one bad thing about like all the sports analogies um, that we use in business is that it, that it allows and it feeds that mentality of fix your weaknesses before you maximize your strengths. Because that's the, the things that work best in sports um, when you're competing literally on the same court, competing head on with somebody who's also one of the most talented and has a lot of the same strengths that you have. The, sometimes the only way to get the edge is to shore up the weakness. But in business, it's usually the opposite. The bigger your strength is, the more successful you can be because you can hire out the weakness. You can't hire out defense on a basketball team. You can't bring a sixth player in to play the defense. You can't play. Right, right. But yeah. speaking of the Masters this week, which we weren't, but mm -hmm. if we were, we would talk about <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> in the old days, when he was kind of relevant, mm -hmm. he would not – his worst game was always a short game in okay. the sand. I mean, he, he, he's on record saying, I suck out of the sand. I think he was like bottom 10% in the entire um, uh, league as far as his ability to shoot out of the sand. Did okay. he go out day after day after day and focus on improving his sand game? No. He maximized his strengths, and he went out every day and practiced to make sure he never went in the sand. Hmm. So he said, what are my talents? And it's this long drive with accuracy. I'll make sure I don't get in the sand. Instead of ignoring his talents and saying, well, I'm good at that, so I'll spend the next month figuring out how to be better in the sand. Now, of yeah. course, you want to try to improve a little bit, but it was not at, any, at, at all his dominant focus. The mm -hmm. majority of it was avoid needing to be dependent on what I suck at, not yeah. fixing what I suck at. Yes, that's really good. Avoiding the need to be dependent on what you suck at. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't position your business. Yeah. I like those words. Don't say, yeah. ah, it's a weakness. And I, just, you, <laughs> just admit it. You, you <laughs> just say to yourself, I suck at this. And so, you know, it's never going to be any better. So we were talking about my weaknesses and everything else. We have the steel trap, the Eileen. Uh, she is watching us, and I know I now know your trick, Landon. I know your, now I know your trick, how you watch. And uh, she, she, everyone knows that I'm the most sports retarded human being on earth. Like I still think basketball is done with a hook, with, with a puck. Um, but I mean, she she decided to type in there, Greg. The Masters is a golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, love you, you Eileen. Eileen. That was fantastic. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so if you would like to uh, if you would like to work with uh, with Greg and I personally and partner up with our team, th this is one of the things that we can help you with. Uh, Melissa actually had a really great question about how you handle people who are extremely high, like high in all three areas. Like so, those are some of the questions that we can answer on our weekly Q and A, which we just we do right before we hop on our Monday shows. That's at 10 a.m. every week on Monday. We also do our Rockstar Agent Mastermind, which is live video training on Monday mornings at 9.30. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other benefits. You get all of our training programs. You get all of all the things, the systems that we've ever created, including stuff that's not even released yet on door knocking and new agent stuff. Uh, and then we're working on our Rockstar Buyer Agent modules right now. So if you want to partner up, get all, all of that training, all of that support, all that weekly ongoing coaching that we do and group settings, uh, Greg. How in the world do they get on a call with you? They call you, Bubba. I don't think um, that's, that, does, that doesn't sound right. That, I feel like that's, <laughs> that I am I am sucky at answering my phone. So that uh, I'm just going to straight up say I suck yes, at that. That is does. not the way to get on a call with Greg. It is not. That, yeah, that no. is a way for you to go into the round file. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys go to bookmcdaniel.com. I say this to every show, but seriously, you know, stop being yourself and book the time with me. So bookmcdaniel.com, get a 30-minute call. Let's see if we're the right team. Let's see if you're the right agent for our team um, to really grow our EXP brand across the, the country, around the world as we expand into other countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, on wherever else they're going to open up. Um, if you don't even know what EXP is and you're like, what is this three-letter word they're speaking of? Well, then you definitely need to do a call with me. I'll explain to you guys how to create wealth and not just collect a paycheck. Uh, and really, because you, you're going to fly your flag. You're not going to fly my flag. You're never going to be the part of the McDaniel Callahan team. You're going to be part of your team, but on our back end where you get all the cool stuff. And Matt's in the middle, almost, almost done, creating a podcast 
product. So our team gets for free that will help you create a platform where you guys have your own podcast and you guys can start get, attracting people to you and your brand and your tribe uh, so you can build your team around the country. Because I want to help put a 50 people on each one of your teams in the next five years or less to create that wealth, that retirement program for you. Because right now we're only as good as our last deal and that blows. So we want to help change that and shift it and fuck it. I've talked enough. Just go to bookmcdaniel.com, book time with me, end of story. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. And for the show, make sure to subscribe. Go to uh, head on over to iTunes, or if you're using your phone, you've got the Apple Podcast app. That's the best way to find us. You can also find us on the Stitcher app, um, or you can grab the video versions on our YouTube channel, or just go straight to our website, reuncensored.com. Grab all the back episodes there. Uh, and then we forget to talk about this, rockstarlivevideo.com. It's our training on how to find your next client on Facebook Live. And so if you are not currently on Facebook Live like we are 17 times a week or whatever it is, uh, talking to your clients, answering questions, uh, talking about the market, talking about your life, sharing what you're doing, sharing the things that you're passionate about. People are missing you and they want to see and they want to hear from you. I don't care if you think you have a face for radio. It doesn't matter. Everybody knows what you look like. Everybody knows what you sound like and they love you anyway. So Get over yourself and get on Facebook Live right now. Go to rockstarlivevideo.com. We've got four modules of training on exactly how to do that. All the stuff that you need is there. So we always forget to promote that. Um, no, it's free. We, we need to work sake. on our self-promotion. I know. We're terrible. I don't know. I don't says know. If, you can, if you can't promote yourself, no, who else is going to? So there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. I'll yes. put a nice, uh, nice bow upon this episode, Greg. Sure. What color do you want it to be, Matt? Uh, let's, let's keep it. Let's make it a nice royal blue bow today. In honor of your Royal shirt. Royal blue it is today. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, you're awesome. Guys, I love you to pieces. We always have a blast doing this. If you guys have chuckled a few times uh, or if you've learned something, share this out to uh, your page. It would help us a lot. Or just go subscribe. But until next time, guys, peace out, ninjas. Guys.